For the first time in 100 years, a political party in one of the Western nations has the chance to change the course of the history of its nation. Now is the time for the politicians to go for glory. But do they have the guts? At the beginning of the 20th century, the people of Britain mandated the Liberal Party to fight injustice. Their weapon of choice was the collection of more revenue from the rents of land. The Conservative Party fought them. They planned to tax food. The people were determined to change the course of history. Cheer up, comrade, look on high, a night is breaking in the sky, and the glorious truth to all will soon appear. With the guide us in the fight, against the tyranny of might, land monopoly from off the earth must clear. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching, all along the line you'll hear. On this principle we stand that the values of the land shall be paid into the treasury every year. Long the people have been fooled while the house of lords have ruled, but the hour of freedom now at last draws near. For the quickening power of thought will their tactics bring to naught, land monopoly from off the earth must clear. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching. All along the line we'll make them clear. On this principle we stand that the values of the land paid into the treasury every year. Could that breakthrough in public consciousness happen again? The problem today is that the Liberals are in bed with the Conservatives in a coalition government. Drawing on his experience when he was a Member of Parliament, one leading Liberal says the time has come to relaunch tax reform to give his party an edge at the next election. Because it's an old policy, because it goes back a hundred years, that doesn't mean to say it's wrong. The question is, we got it right. So why vote for the others who won't do this, who get it wrong, when you can vote for the people who get it right? I was in charge of the Liberal Party's side of the manifesto in 87, and it was not a subject that came up. There was no way that we were going to look at this. And it's, it's sad because in my previous time in the Liberal Party organisation, even going back to the 1960s, it was a very live issue at the time, but not when I was in Parliament. There was nothing at all discussed, alas, about the land issue. Here is a great policy because it brings a whole pile of new income in, not from ordinary people having you know, a single house, but of people who are hoarding land, whether it's the big retailers or whether it's the utilities. I still believe, as far as the evidence shows, that people like hospitals or the railways have still got land they're sitting on. And if you actually um, provoke them into doing something about that, that again is a value. So the, the idea is, first of all, it's, it's right in principle in terms of development. Secondly, it's a value to ordinary people that they will probably pay less in local taxation. And thirdly, it has beneficial effects on the development of land. If we're talking now about the need to build more houses, you are likely to have more land becoming available by making people pay if they don't develop. Now, look, this marvellous old house. I bought this 1981, more than 30 years ago. At that time, it was £40,000. It was a fast sum and we struggled to pay it. But if it had been in what the bourgeoisie think is a more salubrious part of Leeds over in the north of the city, Adel or Motown or whatever, it would have been far more expensive, couldn't possibly have managed it. Now, is anybody going to try and tell me that the bricks and mortar are more valuable in another part of Leeds than here? Of course not. So why is the price different? It's the land. And it's that because it's the land is more valuable in certain parts of the city, as it is in certain parts of the country. Now, when I came to have the house valued 
fairly recently, I was told that the professional said it was now worth £330,000, this vast sum. Now just for the sake of it, I did the calculation of what the rate of inflation on top of 40,000 would be. And I found that 330,000 is around about twice what the 40,000 would be plus inflation. In other words, if I were to sell the house now, uh, in theory, I have 160,000 pounds in my hand for which I've done very little. Now, why should that be? Now, if someone said to me, look, Mr. Meadowcroft, we will actually tax that increase in the value of the land but in return, we don't have any council tax. I would say that sounds not only fair, but it also is probably beneficial to me economically. So why not do it? And if you're saying to me, we will bring other parts of the, of the land ownership on which nothing is paid now because it's not developed into the local exchequer and so you pay less, I would think that was a pretty good deal. So here is a splendid house. I can afford it just about and we gain from doing it and it's also just and equitable for everybody. Gilded idlers have been blessed by the peers and all the rest who have fattened on the toilers every year. But God's bounty shall be freed from the lust of human greed. Land monopoly from off the earth must clear. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching. All along the line we'll make them clear. On this principle we stand that the values of the land shall be paid into the treasury every year. But we still have a problem that we are not getting land coming forward for what I think most people regard as beneficial development. And the whole principle of taxing land values is to the maximum permitted development value. That's the crucial d definition of it. So you're not talking about people with a golf course paying vast amounts, because if it's a golf course, it hasn't got a great development value. But you are saying, look, if you're sitting on this piece of land, which can be developed, then you pay for the price of holding it. Now, if you're wanting to have more development, then clearly you would then encourage people to do it by saying, if you don't, you have to pay the price of not developing. Now, it seems to me to be a perfectly proper and a perfectly valuable social principle. I remember donkeys years ago when I was working in London, we had Centre Point built. One of these big developers did that. And for donkeys years, he kept the Centre Point vacant. Why? because it, it benefited him to do that. He didn't have the hassle of letting it and having to be the landlord and so on, because he was able to remortgage it every so many years. And the increased value of the property then came into his hands. And that was because he was paying nothing for it while it was empty. But how much more valuable it would be to tax the, the value of the land on which Centrepoint was based and then he would not have had any benefit by not occupying it. We are not short of land as it happens in Britain, whatever people tell us. We've got 41 million acres of land in this country. Vast amounts of it are owned by private land landowners who have a lot of land which is not agricultural or forest or whatever, but actually is land which can be developed. The struggle for the hearts and minds of voters in the democracies of the West is bedeviled by the way ancient wisdoms have been distorted by modern myths. Economic truths have been polluted by political prejudices. Social welfare has been undermined by private privileges. The world is now a dangerous place, but someone has to risk the political capital by declaring a willingness to fight for the common good. Might that revolution begin here over the future of the Mother of Parliaments? And with a ringing loud acclaim, men shall hail through freedom's reign, land monopoly from off the earth must clear. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching, all along the line we'll make them clear.
year. On this principle we stand that the values of the land shall be paid into the treasury every year. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching. All along the line we'll make them clear. On this principle we stand that the values of the land shall be paid into the treasury every year. Thank <laughs> you.